Samantha wanted to be famous. The problem was that she had never considered all the downsides to actually being famous. Had she taken the time to objectively consider these downsides, she would have never agreed to publicly sing that first song. Terence knew that sometimes it was simply best to stay out of it. He kept repeating this to himself as he watched the scene unfold. He knew that nothing good would come of him getting involved. It was far better for him to stay on the sidelines and observe. He kept yelling this to himself inside his head as he walked over to the couple and punched the man in the face. The wolves stopped in their tracks, sizing up the mother and her cubs. It had been over a week since their last meal and they were getting desperate. The cubs would make a good meal, but there were high risks taking on the mother grizzly. A decision had to be made and the wrong choice could signal the end of the pack. Laurie lived her life through the lens of a camera. She never realized this until this very moment. As she scrolled through thousands of images on your computer, she could remember the exact moment each photo was taken. She could remember where she had been what she was thinking as she tried to get the shot, the smells of the surrounding area, and even the emotions that she felt taking the photo, yet she had trouble remembering what she had for breakfast. She nervously peered over the edge. She understood in her mind that the view was supposed to be beautiful, but all she felt was fear. There had always been something about heights that disturbed her, and now she could feel the full force of this unease. She reluctantly crept a little closer with the encouragement of her friends as the fear continued to build. She couldn't help but feel that something horrible was about to happen. Sleep deprivation causes all sorts of challenges and problems. When one doesn't get enough sleep one's mind doesn't work clearly. Studies have shown that after staying awake for 24 hours one's ability to do simple math is greatly impaired. Driving tired has been shown to be as bad as driving drunk. Moods change, depression, anxiety, and mania can be induced by lack of sleep. As much as people try to do without enough sleep it is a wonder more crazy things don't happen in this world. Sometimes that's just the way it has to be. Sure, there were probably other options, but he didn't let them enter his mind. It was done and that was that. It was just the way it had to be. The red ball sat proudly at the top of the toy box. It had been the last to be played with and anticipated it would be the next as well. The other toys grumbled beneath. At one time each had held the spot of the red ball, but over time they had sunk deeper and deeper into the toy box. The irony of the situation hadn't escaped her. She had taken years to sculpt the perfect persona with the perfect look that she shared on Instagram. She knew her hundreds of thousands of followers envied that life she showed and stayed engaged with her because they wanted that life too. The truth was that she wanted the perfect life she portrayed more than any of her fans. The fact was that despite all the perfection she shared on social media, her life was actually more of a mess than most. She glanced up into the sky to watch the clouds taking shape. First, she saw a dog. Next, it was an elephant. Finally, she saw a giant umbrella and at that moment the rain began to pour. It was supposed to be a dream vacation. They had planned it over a year in advance so that it would be perfect in every way. It had been what they had been looking forward to through all the turmoil and negativity around them. It had been the light at the end of both their tunnels. Now that the dream vacation was only a week away, the virus had stopped all air travel. Where do they get a random paragraph? He wondered as he clicked the generate button. Do they just write a random paragraph or do they get it somewhere? At that moment he read the random paragraph and realized it was about random paragraphs and his world would never be the same. It really shouldn't have mattered to Betty. That's what she kept trying to convince herself even if she knew it mattered to Betty more than practically anything else. Why was she trying to convince herself otherwise? As she stepped forward to knock on Betty's door. She still didn't have a convincing answer to this question that she'd been asking herself for more than two years now. One can cook on and with an open fire. These are some of the ways to cook with fire outside. Cooking meat using a spit is a great way to evenly cook meat. In order to keep meat from burning, it's best to slowly rotate it. Hot stones can be used to toast bread. Coals are hot and can bring things to a boil quickly. If one is very adventurous, one can make a hole in the ground. Fill it with coals and place foil covered meat, veggies, and potatoes into the coals, and cover all of it with dirt. In a short period of time, 
the food will be baked. Campfire cooking can be done in many ways. It probably seemed trivial to most people, but it mattered to Tracy. She wasn't sure why it mattered so much to her, but she understood deep within her being that it mattered to her. So for the 365th day in a row, Tracy sat down to eat pancakes for breakfast. He had disappointed himself more than anyone else. That wasn't to say that he hadn't disappointed others. The fact was that he had disappointed a lot of people who were close to him. The fact that they were disappointed in him was something that made him even more disappointed in himself. Yet here he was about to do the exact same things that had caused all the disappointment in the first place because he didn't know what else to do. What were they eating? It didn't taste like anything she had ever eaten before and although she was famished, she didn't dare ask. She knew the answer would be one she didn't want to hear. The paper was blank. It shouldn't have been. There should have been writing on the paper, at least a paragraph if not more. The fact that the writing wasn't there was frustrating. Actually, it was even more than frustrating. It was downright distressing. The river slowly meandered through the open space. It had hidden secrets that it didn't want to reveal. It had a well-planned strategy to appear calm, inviting, and appealing. That's how the river lured her unknowing victims to her water's edge. A long black shadow slid across the pavement near their feet and the five Venusians, very much startled looked overhead. They were barely in time to see the huge grey form of the carnivore before it vanished behind a sign atop a nearby building which bore the mystifying information Pepsi Cola. There was no ring on his finger. That was a good sign although far from proof that he was available. Still, it was much better than if he had been wearing a wedding ring on his hand. She glanced at his hand a bit more intently to see if there were any tan lines where a ring may have been and he's simply taken it off. She couldn't detect any which was also a good sign and a relief. The next step would be to get access to his wallet to see if there were any family photos in it. He hid under the covers hoping that nobody would notice him there. It really didn't make much sense since it would be obvious to anyone who walked into the room there was someone hiding there, but he still held out hope. He heard footsteps coming down the hall and stop in front in front of the bedroom door. He heard the squeak of the door hinges and someone opened the bedroom door. He held his breath waiting for whoever was about to discover him, but they never did. The rain was coming. Everyone thought this would be a good thing. It hadn't rained in months and the earth was dry as a bone. It wasn't a surprise that everyone thought a good rain was what was needed, but they never expected how much rain would actually arrive. It was hidden under the log beside the stream. It had been there for as long as Jerry had been alive. He wasn't sure if anyone besides him and his friends knew of its existence. He knew that anyone could potentially find it, but it was well enough hidden that it seemed unlikely to happen. The fact that it had been there for more than 30 years attested to this. So it was quite a surprise when he found the item was missing. The day had begun on a bright note. The sun finally peeked through the rain for the first time in a week and the birds were singing in its warmth. There was no way to anticipate what was about to happen. It was a worst case scenario and there was no way out of it. What is the best way to get what you want? She asked. He looked down at the ground knowing that she wouldn't like his answer. He hesitated, knowing that the truth would only hurt. How was he going to tell her that the best way for him to get what he wanted was to leave her? Debbie had taken George for granted for more than 15 years now. He wasn't sure what exactly had made him choose this time and place to address the issue, but he decided that now was the time. He looked straight into her eyes and just as she was about to speak, turned away and walked out the door. It had become a far too common an event in her life. She has specifically placed the key to the box in a special place so that she wouldn't lose it and know exactly where it was when the key was needed. Now that she needed to open the box, she had absolutely no idea where that special spot she placed the key might be. He picked up the burnt end of the branch and made a mark on the stone. Day 52 if the marks on the stone were accurate. He couldn't be sure. Day and nights had begun to blend together creating confusion, 
but he knew it was a long time, much too long, welcome to my world, you will be greeted by the unexpected here and your mind will be challenged and expanded in ways that you never thought possible, that is if you are able to survive, it was difficult to explain to them how the diagnosis of certain death had actually given him life, while everyone around him was in tears and upset, he actually felt more at ease, the doctor said it would be less than a year, that gave him a year to live, something he'd failed to do with his daily drudgery of a routine that had passed as life until then, the water rushed down the wash and into the slot canyon below, two hikers had started the day to sunny weather without a cloud in the sky but they hadn't thought to check the weather north of the canyon, huge thunderstorms had brought a deluge of rain and produced flash floods heading their way, the two hikers had no idea what was coming, he heard the crack echo in the late afternoon about a mile away, his heart started racing and he bolted into a full sprint, it wasn't a gunshot, it wasn't a gunshot, he repeated under his breathlessness as he continued to sprint, he scolded himself for being so tentative, he knew he shouldn't be so cautious, but there was a sixth sense telling him that things weren't exactly as they appeared, it was that weird chill that rolls up your neck and makes the hair stand on end, he knew that being so tentative could end up costing him the job, but he learned that listening to his sixth sense usually kept him from getting into a lot of trouble, the light was out on the front porch of the house, this was strange, Judy couldn't remember a time when she had ever seen it out, she hopped out of her car and walked to the door, it was slightly ajar and she knew this meant something terrible, she gently pushed the door open and all her fears were realized, surprise, happy birthday, everyone shouted, it was a scrape that he hardly noticed, sure, there was a bit of blood but it was minor compared to most of the other cuts and bruises he acquired on his adventures, there was no way he could know that the rock that produced the cut had alien genetic material on it that was now racing through his bloodstream, he felt perfectly normal and continued his adventure with no knowledge of what was about to happen to him, he sat across from her trying to imagine it was the first time, it wasn't, had it been a hundred, it quite possibly could have been, two hundred, probably not, his mind wandered until he caught himself and again tried to imagine it was the first time, the wave roared towards them with speed and violence they had not anticipated, they both turned to run but by the time it was too late, the wave crashed into their legs sweeping both of them off of their feet, they now found themselves in a washing machine of salt water, getting tumbled and not know what was up or down, both were scared, not knowing how this was going to end, but it was by far the best time of the trip thus far, although Scott said it didn't matter to him, he knew deep inside that it did, they had been friends as long as he could remember and not once had he had to protest that something Joe apologized for doing didn't really matter, Scott stuck to his lie and insisted again and again that everything was fine as Joe continued to apologize, Scott already knew that despite his words accepting the apologies that their friendship would never be the same, I recollect that my first exploit in squirrel shooting was in a grove of tall walnut trees that shades one side of the valley, I I had wandered into it at noon time, when all nature is peculiarly quiet, and was startled by the roar of my own gun, as it broke the Sabbath stillness around and was prolonged and reverberated by the angry echoes, the headphones were on, they had been utilized on purpose, she could hear her mom yelling in the background, but couldn't make out exactly what the yelling was about, that was exactly why she had put them on, she knew her mom would enter her room at any minute, and she could pretend that she hadn't heard any of the previous yelling, there was little doubt that the bridge was unsafe, all one had to do was look at it to know that with certainty, yet Bob didn't see another option, he may have been able to work one out if he had a bit of time to think things through, but time was something he didn't have, a choice needed to be made, and it needed to be made quickly, the computer wouldn't start, she banged on the side and tried again, nothing, she lifted it up and dropped it to the table, still nothing, she banged her closed fist against the top, it was at this moment she saw the irony of trying to fix the machine with violence, they rushed out the door, 
grabbing anything and everything they could think of they might need. There was no time to double check to make sure they weren't leaving something important behind. Everything was thrown into the car and they sped off. Thirty minutes later they were safe and that was when it dawned on them that they had forgotten the most important thing of all. She considered the birds to be her friends. She'd put out food for them each morning and then she'd watch as they came to the feeders to gorge themselves for the day. She wondered what they would do if something ever happened to her. Would they miss the meal she provided if she failed to put out the food one morning? The amber droplet hung from the branch reaching fullness and ready to drop. It waited. While many of the other droplets were satisfied to form as big as they could and release, this droplet had other plans. It wanted to be part of history. It wanted to be remembered long after all the other droplets had dissolved into history. So it waited for the perfect specimen to fly by to trap and capture that it hoped would eventually be discovered hundreds of years in the future. The blinking light caught her attention. She thought about it a bit and couldn't remember ever noticing it before. That was strange since it was obvious the flashing light had been there for years. Now she wondered how she missed it for that amount of time and what other things in her small town she had failed to notice. The bush began to shake. Brad couldn't see what was causing it to shake, but he didn't care. He had a pretty good idea about what was going on and what was happening. He was so confident that he approached the bush carefully and with a smile on his face. That all changed the instant he realized what was actually behind the bush. She had been an angel for coming up on ten years and in all that time nobody had told her this was possible. The fact that it could ever happen never even entered her mind. Yet there she stood with the undeniable evidence sitting on the ground before her. Angels could lose their wings. It wasn't supposed to end that way. The plan had been meticulously thought out and practiced again and again. There was only one possible result once it had been implemented. But as they stood there the result wasn't anything close to what it should have been. They all blankly looked at each wondering how this could have happened. In their minds, they all began to blame the other members of the group as to why they had failed. 